I just made my first optical illusion on paper. Check this out. When you look at it from a top-down view, it looks like an R, right? But when you angle the camera in a certain way, and thanks to the shading, it makes it look like the R is three-dimensional. You can see the cliff. You can see how the shading kind of makes the R, the little circle inside the R, go down. This is an illusion. I actually made three illusions. This one, for example, you think that the lines are bending, but they're really not. But take a look at this illusion. Try to focus your eyes on one intersection. And now ask yourself, what are the colors of the other intersections, right? It's playing a trick on you. Or take a look at this one. Your eyes are telling you the image is moving slightly. In reality, it's stationary. Nothing is happening. I'm just so fascinated how illusions trick your brain. And what got me interested in this in the first place was this one tweet I saw on the internet. So essentially it was two moving circles. Let's say you put an arrow inside these circles. Now your mind is saying that these circles are moving in the direction of these arrows. How is it possible that as humans, we're smart enough to put people on the moon. We're smart enough to cure diseases. We're smart enough to do a lot of things, but yet our brains trick us every time you see these illusions. Let's figure it out. Let's talk about it. We need to first understand how our eyes perceives the world around us. We're about to drive to a mural to help emphasize my point on illusions, but as I'm driving there, what I see is not necessarily what you think you're seeing. Let me explain. This all starts with the sun. So the sun is hitting all these objects. Then the objects is reflecting that light into our eyes. That light is then turned into electrical signals for our visual cortex to register what we're actually seeing. And what's nuts is that the whole process takes one tenth of a second. Here's a quick demonstration of how long that takes. Yeah, that quickly. And because of the shortcut, our brains tends to make assumptions, which creates illusions. So this is really interesting. I walk on the street every single day to go to the gym and I walk by this mural right here. And this mural perfectly describes what I'm talking about. It's so beautiful how the shortcomings of our brains and eyes, not really shortcomings, but these illusions that we we see can be turned into beautiful art. So take this mural, for example. You can tell like how this artist was able to use illusions to his advantage to create depth, to create perception. You're able to see things more with less. And that's really cool. That's really cool to me. The optical illusion that really fascinates me is this one right here. So when you put two blocks together, they look like they're two different colors, right? But in reality, they're the same color. If you don't believe me, let's do this. Let's put a black box between those two where they intersect. Obviously now you can tell that both these blocks are the same color. This is called the corn sweet illusion. This optical illusion blows my mind because it's using lateral inhibition essentially. So what lateral inhibition is, is that the photoreceptors in our eyes, what they do is they tend to see contrast in images. So our eyes tend to focus on the edges to help get a better idea of where everything is. So using that tactic that our eyes and our brains know, we're being tricked with these two blocks being the same color. Or in this case, we think they're two different colors, but in reality, they're the two same colors. Um, and of course, illusions have been translated into products that we can actually own. So let's take a look at some of the things that they actually have for sale uh, in case you were interested in buying any uh, illusions for sale. Ooh, take a look at this. There's like a cool shirt. So if you want a fashion sense to be revolved around optical illusions, you can. There's other things that you can get. Ooh, look, there's an optical illusion for carpets. Um, it's a 3D vortex. So it looks like you're going into a black hole every time you're stepping onto that carpet, which is if you want that. Something that's a little bit more realistic that I would potentially get is like, take a look at this. It's an infinite mirror cube. All right, let's zoom in here. Okay, this is interesting. It's cool. Wait, it's $458. Thanks, capitalism. At the end of the day, these artists are using three main types of optical illusions at all times. The first one is a literal optical illusion, which is creating images that are different from the objects that make them. A good example is this image right here. Some of you might see this image and say, you see a young lady, versus some of you might see an old lady. This artist found a way to create two images in one, and it tricks your brain depending on just your subconscious and how your eyes processes it. The second illusion is a physiological illusion. This is where your eyes and brain is being excessively stimulated by things like brightness, tilt, color, movement. A good example is this image right here. It looks like it's moving, but it's not not your eyes are playing tricks with you because 
illusions. The last example is a cognitive illusion. This is where our eyes and brains make unconscious inferences. A good example is this piece of artwork right here. The way the artist drew it, our eyes makes the reference and the inference that the staircase is constantly going up, but in reality, it's not. So the illusions I was making in the beginning of the video incorporated two of the three optical illusion types. So the hearing illusion, the mock illusion, and the snake illusion, those are all physiological illusions. And then this really fancy R that I made, that is a cognitive illusion. Illusions and wisdom combined are charmed by light and art. Okay, I'm really trying to let it not trick me. I'm really trying. Okay, I give up. I find it almost romantic like these inefficiencies that our brain and eyes have has created so much art and so much entertainment for people um, through centuries. If you think about it, like look at all the way through the murals to the artwork that I created to the artwork that I showed that is being sold online. It's fascinating to me how this one simple inefficiency or shortcut that our brains takes has just done so much for our, our just our personal well-being in the sense that it's just entertaining. Maybe there's a life lesson that we can create out of these illusions. Maybe we should stop trying to control the things that we can't control and just focus on just enjoying the ride. Is that too dramatic? I'll workshop it. But until then, I'm running with it. Illusions.